Welcome to C4 Talks with Garrett and Will. Welcome Will. back, guys. How are you guys doing? What's up? It's good to see you guys again. It's been doing? a minute. Dude, I'm doing good. How are you doing, Garrett? I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, I'm just chill. Got off work. Right, you know, hanging out. Ready to do this. Yeah. So, I was reading on Complex News recently Right. that the indescribably awful rapper Lil Pump, <laughs> uh, who... By some satanic cult uh, miracle, managed to top the n- top three in the Billboard 100 charts with his annoying as fuck Gucci Gang single. Right. Um, uh, has apparently there's been rumors going around right. that he is possibly falling out with uh, his current uh, record label. Uh, Warner Brothers. Right, Warner Brothers, obviously, you know. And, um, you know, those those rumors, they might have a, 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 a hint of truth to them due to the fact that I've heard lawyers that are associated with Lil Pump have said that since his contract with Warner Brothers was signed while he was a minor, mm-hmm. that the contract uh, can't be ratified oh, or, shit. or will be ratified. Uh-huh. Um, because he was still a minor at the time. He exactly. was an independent. So, so the contract is uh, not a stronghold. It, it, right. it could essentially fall through. True. And therefore, uh, that, that being the case, uh, the rumors are also saying that... Uh, any number of other record labels are dishing out contracts that are probably substantial, very substantial. They're right. going to make this motherfucker insanely rich, right? As if he wasn't already. And because I mean, yeah, I mean, like here's the thing. Well, it's going to jump drastically, yeah. Because I imagine it uh, with uh, he was going to be paid, uh, like I I don't remember what it was, like the compensation, not compensation. Uh, the amount of money he was paid in advance for joining the record label yeah. at Warner Brothers, yeah. I think it was uh, a sum of around uh, 345000 Basically just for the deal. Yeah, and then uh, just for... I think he was going to... That was going to be, like I guess, his... I don't know if budget or whatever. Some, somehow the number three three 345000 got thrown into the mix, and he's okay. going to receive 15% of the royalties. Right. Which is over 51 Thousand. Basically, yeah, just the bonus for sending. So that's just like that's like good amount of money. Yes, just obviously. based just based in that short amount of time. Right. Yeah. However, if this these rumors are true, he will be skyrocketing to a instant millionaire. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, specifically, eight to twelve million dollars. It's crazy. I don't really understand. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, I don't see who would fork out this much money for this character. Seven out of ten. At, at best, dude. That's all I can say. I mean, like, you definitely hate this guy. This guy's indescribably bad to you. Exactly. It, it, like, there's nothing I can say to you right now that'll make you happy. It's <laughs> nothing just... about this makes me No, of course not. But the like, very idea that this the... guy is going to be paid millions of dollars yeah. because somebody wants him that bad yeah. irritates me. He's, uh, he's also, like, how much older than you? Like He's, just, he's like a... The same age as me. I think I'm older than him. Yeah. Yeah. That's some this shit. guy's a kid uh, who doesn't. Oh Jesus! Hunt Christ. on wrist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh uh, uh, no! That's I fine. heard in the the statement when a Warner Brothers was originally signing this kid mm-hmm. that the president or CEO of Warner Brothers was like, "We want him. We're really excited to get him because he's charismatic." Has a huge personality, yeah, and uh, has got so much talent, yeah. And that's when I just fucking threw my phone because yeah. I was like, "Are you watching me, dude?" But to be honest with you, that's what, that's what people think about Lil Pump right now. I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, I can get the huge personality. I don't really get charisma that much. But that's like a that's a different type of read. That's like yeah, like I don't know the guy personally. Because I think you personally read intelligent, like curves him off of intelligence, like how smart someone is in conversation. Right. And to be honest, I don't even know if I have that much faith in his speech. Because right. Because I've seen videos of him actually speaking. Yeah. Right. He's kind of an asshole from what I've seen. Like, yeah. Like honestly, I've just seen videos where he's been an asshole to people. Like that famous, uh, what was it? Like Instagram 
video where he's on an airplane high off Percocets. Yeah. Being a dick to everybody. Yeah. Uh, not a very good image. No. Uh, didn't help my... Because this was how I was introduced to this guy. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so that definitely helps your Yeah, that was like the, one of the first things I saw. First impressions. Um, yeah. Ma- lasting. Very lasting of impact course. on me. Yeah. No, I understand that. It's just like... I don't know. It's definitely the image he's gone for. I have to say that because this is definitely what he's chosen. I mean, I have to say this in his defense. Mm -hmm. Being a creator and not being an asshole is very hard to do. It's kind of like a super... I I feel like, personally, like if you're a creator, if you're something like a creative person, like you have creative thought, like it's hard to like not be cynical about either what you create or the people that enjoy what you create. I agree with you. I agree with you that uh, being in that kind of environment is very stressful. Yeah, it can't. It's hard not to come off to some people that way. Yeah, but, but this guy's, you feel like reaching a different I, level of... I feel like he's hes in this boat mm-hmm. when he doesn't have to be. Okay. Uh, I can draw the comparison to him being this year, past year's 2017's Lily Adi. Sure. Um... Because, you know, I I draw the comparisons by the fact that, you know, he's got different colored dreads. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's got this sort of weird persona that I guess people like. Um, Yeah. I don't really see him as all that weird. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't really... I've heard some lyrics from him that Mm -hmm. don't really leap off the page for me. Yeah. Um, And I feel the same... And I feel like that's the same way with Oliati. I feel like he's another rapper that has this image about him that makes him seem more interesting than he actually is. Right, And then yeah. you get to actually listening to his songs, and it's the same old shit you hear from, like, every other rapper. Eh, yeah, but I mean, I don't really know. It, it, to be honest, like, there's a lot of people that would like to get famous off of saying the same things, though. You know what I mean? And th- these people are already famous, so, like... It's I mean, almost like, what can you say? Yeah, you really... I can't say anything yeah. to, like, it's, debunk the guy. The guy's already, like, ma- <laughs> he's on his way to making millions of right. fucking dollars. exactly. Yeah, and it's just, like... It's just, like, kind of unbelievable, to be honest. All of it. I mean, the rap genre... Like, everything has changed. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I didn't expect this big of a change. I used to, like, rap that, like, was super, like, classic shit and, like, stuff that, were, like... You know, I don't know. Like, it's not that I don't like that stuff. It's just, like things are so different now like i never would have expected this kind of like movement due to the due to the internet there's so many different styles so many different brains getting together and just pumping shit out that's true uh ultimately creating different subgenres. i feel almost like every day yeah like there's always something definitely there's something always new but somehow always the same yeah but I just I just can't see like like I said these are just rumors yeah there's there's no telling if somebody's actually out there if there's a falling out yeah like but it's not been confirmed the the only connection that we actually can draw is to the fact that there's been a lot of people in the past that have been hammering it out with his producer yeah you know like a lot of a lot of people trying to deal with you know things that are you know problematic with record labels and with with the producers in that record label so it's not entirely uh, out of the question that warner brothers could be fucking low pump over and he's just trying to get out the game he's trying to get out of that situation at least yeah and trying to find a different label but i mean and that's not the that's not the first time we've heard something like this of course not and if he can sign for more i mean why wouldn't he honestly more power to you if you are smart enough to get out of a situation like that. Yeah. You're smart enough to get out of from under an abusive record label's thumb. Right. Because yeah. from what I understand, they would give him. That's impossible. They would give him uh, the three hundred forty-five thousand dollars plus fifteen percent royalties. Yeah. Um, for whatever albums he put out mm-hmm. with stipulations intact. Right. He like the only way he could get that amount of money is if the album he put out was over like 14 songs in the track list. That's like it. That was like that's like an example of the stipulations. Mm-hmm. But but um, there were more obviously and the harder to come by, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I, I wouldn't want to be under those stipulations either cuz no. record labels 
will like keep you under the thumb. If they yeah, can. They'll, they'll do anything. Right. Honestly, it's about their money, really. Um, that's a lot like the uh, recent stuff we've heard with like uh, the Atlanta record labels with Warner Brothers right. themselves. With, yeah, with Atlantic. Yeah, and with Warner Brother, yeah, Warner Brothers. It's just like I don't understand like why people can't understand that like uh, music is art. Mm-hmm. And like, why we can't just like put at least like a little bit more care, or at least a little bit more time. Like, I feel like most people listen to music and take it for granted while they're in their car, like while they're driving. Right? Yeah. And even though that's only a distraction by one thing, I feel like it's so much that you can get off the topic of even listening to the music, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you even listening to right now? Right. Like, I don't know. I just wish people would care as much as we do about music. Right. Yeah, or at least, you know, hope just as much... Just a little bit more seriously. Right. I know, understand the amount of hard work that goes into it. Yeah, and, like, get, feel like you're getting something from it. You know, try to take something away from what you're listening to. I really hate these record labels that take advantage of producers that, that pump out all these beats... That are all clean. They're all together. They're Pretty all solid. Yeah. Pump out albums. <laughs> and to be honest with you, if you can make an album that even relatively sounds like it's popular mm-hmm. and like mainstream in this year, you made it. Pretty much half the battle is won. Yeah. If you can get good vocals on it, and if you can get good the rest, of, like if the production is there, half the battle is won, and they're paying them for like twenty five percent of it. <laughs> I. I just can't believe that somebody could go through all this amount of hard work. And watch someone put in that much effort for something. Exactly. Literally, days and nights could be spent. Years. I mean, just getting this shit off the ground. Right. Only for whatever record label you're under, turn right around, take take the uh, album price stuff you have, album worthy stuff you have, and then market it as a mixtape and sell it as a mixtape. Right. And then, therefore, as a result, uh, whatever royalties, whatever percentage of royalties Come that that to person's you less. Get, yeah, you get paid less, even though you put in an album's amount of work. Dep- yeah, and it, I imagine, like, anybody that works on this as hard as they do, anybody that's put in a position to, like, be even paid to make this kind of music cares about it a shit ton a lot like they care about music probably way more than we do know about music way more way more oh, than we absolutely. do but like it's just like how i don't know I, I i don't understand how like anybody in this world doesn't get given what they're supposed to i i, I also feel really bad for the kind of people that because i mean like i feel bad for those people that know that honestly like if if they like they that recognize they're being taken advantage by the record by the record label yeah and and also vice versa understand that they really can't do much about it due yeah. to the fact that if they stopped production if they stopped working with these guys they're probably likely not to see work for a while i'm going to be honest this is kind of a horrible analogy and i don't want you guys to think wrong of me but it's kind of like an abusive boyfriend mm mm-hmm. mhm it's super hard to get out from under the thumb. Mm-hmm. Financially, they control you. You know, thing like it, it makes it very hard. It makes you feel like you're trapped. Yeah. It like no matter what you do, being the person in the relationship, right? You can never like whatever you do, however hard you try, right. whatever amount of work you put in to making it work with this relationship, so you can get by and just mm-hmm. honestly survive. Yeah. No matter what you do, you're never really gonna amount to much. You're right. never really gonna to hit the high point you hope you're gonna hit. Because they could just turn around and do whatever exactly. to you. They could they could uh pump out maybe like pump. Pump. A little pump. They could <laughs> a little pump out uh one one <laughs> album maybe out of the dozens and dozens of albums you've made and tried to put out there that they turned into mixtapes or uh, lowered the percentage of royalties you earn, any of that, they could pump out one album Mm -hmm. that you've actually made and Mm -hmm. put out there Mm -hmm. and... Like 20 song track list? Yeah. And, you know, they price it good and they give you a good amount of royalties Mm -hmm. and then they could just drop your ass. Yeah, totally. Your contract could probably expire. Or yeah, whatever. Or they could maybe find some loophole, terminate it, or just keep butt-fucking you if they felt like it. 
you know, it's that's really how it is here. Mm. That's really how, that's really what it's about. I just like I don't know. It's hard to uh, imagine it like this. Like it even has the effect of making you feel like even though you're doing all this amount of hard work, nothing you will ever do is going to amount to much. So therefore, you're developing the mindset that nothing you do matters. Exactly. So you're not going to put as much work and effort into the beats you make. All you're ever going to do is make average beats. Yeah. And they're still going to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. And it's not even that they are average. It's just like you feel like they're average mm -hmm. or you feel like they're lackluster. Or, you know, you doubt yourself. Yeah. And then, and then that harbors self-doubt and that harbors, you know, yeah. necessary, like third party, like approval. Exactly. You feel like you, you feel like even though this is the best you you can do, the mm. best you've been able to do, max insecurity because the record label turns could, around and yeah. essentially makes you feel like this isn't the best. They they that they're not going to market it the way that they, you know, they want it. I could never be like someone who draws or like someone who gets their value from like something they create, something artistic. I could never like I just my mindset could never handle that because of the constant insecurity and lack of self-understanding and just everything about it honestly it's, it's scary it's <laughs> i couldn't imagine living in that world mm -mm. like because there's so many different stories about just record labels just totally taking advantage of people you remember like back in the old days when uh young rappers would start coming up didn't really read the fine print in their contracts or whatever and then would sign something that they didn't know what they were signing and end up getting totally you know destroyed their career could be thrown in the trash because they're because i know stories with like famous rappers like like just off the top of my head tech nine hobson they were signed to record labels earlier on in their careers yeah. and those record labels uh you know fucked them Pretty apparently much. within the contracts that they had that the record label could do whatever they wanted Mm -hmm. That could that and that could mean uh, throwing a bunch of money at you, getting you to do whatever they wanted, make them a good amount of money, but you don't get any of it. Or or they could do what they did to Tech Nine and just not play you at all. Just essentially have you on this record label and then just not fucking do anything with you. I don't know what else comes along with that if they are somehow for getting you to pay them money just by sticking around mm -hmm. and then not making any money in return because they're not giving you any play time. Right. Uh, there's, oh, geez, there's like... Endless options, there's, really. Yeah, there's endless scenarios. There's endless situations Ways that come they along can with fuck that. you. And it's incredible to me. Yeah. It's incredible that there are assholes out there that could do this shit. That take advantage of people like just good producers that want to make beats and stuff like that's what they want to do with their life you know it's truly truly sad and I yeah i mean it'll get resolved though it because of the fact that we even are talking about this you I mean, have yeah. to you have to imagine how many people know now mm -hmm. if, we, if we're common sense mm -hmm. we're you know we, we're people that you know uh we're young like you know we only know so much we're the, and if it if it got to honest. us i think if it got to us like Enough people know now that things are probably going to change. Right, it's out there. You know? Right, yeah, and uh, I just I hate to hear from whoever like was there or is there or has been a part of something like that where they got cheated or where you know they you know it just it's just unfortunate to be honest. It, I, I can't I can't even dude it. I'm at least satisfied knowing that the issue is getting out there. Yeah, and it's being brought to more people's attention. Right. And hopefully, with this information, you know, out to the public, because very recently, you know, the issues we just got through talking about, producers not getting paid what they should be getting paid, has, you know, the whistle's been blown on that. Mm -hmm. More and more people are coming out, telling their stories. TM88, uh, DJ Payne won, you know, whatever. Yeah. DJ Payne. Uh, like, their stories are getting out there. Right. So more people are going to hear it. Uh, there's going to be record labels out there that maybe are going to hear this 
Right. Maybe they're the straight, maybe, like they're the normal guys. Right. The normal record labels that are going to, you know, want to pay money to these guys. Right. Get these guys on their regular say, we're not going to do this shit to right. you. Because, yeah, they try to respect the view, or, you know, however it may be. But I, I think that, I think that at least we'll probably be on the right path because, you know, as, as soon as people get involved, uh, you can almost guarantee that it's going to get ruined immediately so yeah it's gonna get shut down it's it's just like any joke that's come out in the past six seconds well I mean, it just gets ruined because people ruin it yeah like same I, things it's just gonna happen i really feel though because i mean like i feel shitty thinking about this but there's that you know that other half of me that just kind of like knows it's gonna happen that even if this issue gets shut down there's going to be another issue down the line that crops back up. Yeah, totally. Yes, the record labels. Someone's going to stop trying to pay someone as much as they should be paid. Exactly. Like, I understand it's a business, and money is, like, a big part of it, big part of the business. Right. But you, you Can gotta, you just, like, pay someone decent, their worth? Yeah, be a decent human being. Try. At least. God damn. I don't know. I'll, uh, just try. <laughs> just, just do your best. All right. Uh, speaking of people not paying people, uh, Spotify... Okay. Yes, getting sued for one point six billion dollars. One point six billion dollars. <laughs> um, Guys, he put his pinky up to the right side of his mouth. <laughs> did my Doctor Evil impression? You you could see, but it happened. Yeah, it it it's gonna happen today. Oh, it's gonna happen again. One point um, six billion dollars. They are being sued by the Wixen Music uh, Publishing Company. Uh, uh, sort of uh, not like a huge big deal they're just they've just got a few singers on there uh, right. I know off the top of my head Rick James is one of them uh, the meme lord himself uh, in the flesh um, suing uh, Spotify due to the fact that Spotify is uh, streaming unlicensed music and not compensating the original artists right. for said music. Yeah, not paying the royalties, just... Just not at all. Tom Petty, I know, has been getting fucked by it. He's... He, apparently, this is information that's new to me, uh, he would he would find out that one of his songs are being played, or a majority of songs, albums even, of his music being streamed on Spotify. That he was not aware of. Exactly. And he had no clue that this was happening. Of course. And... Because and, who's, who's going to let him know? Exactly. The they f- would obviously assume that he knows this. The audience isn't going to know. No. Because that's... Because it's not like it says like they, they can't, Tom Petty. Yeah, and they can't contact Tom Petty and like be like, hey, bro, your shit's on Spotify. Exactly. Like, that would eventually... Like, he would have... I'm would've, glad he found out. Me too. Because, I mean, like, imagine how long so that had been shitty. going on and then him just realize that he's not getting any money in the mail. Right. He's so, like, how long has this shit been going Right. On? So, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Like, do you think that Spotify... Like, obviously, like, they have uh, unbelievable amounts of, like... Music. Music, and the license to this music, and they're paying out royalties to the people who they bought the license from, you know, uh, you know, and right. it's, it's, it's just like, do you think that at a certain point they were like, we'll start putting up music, and then while wow, we're in the works... Of, like, working that out with whoever that we're, like, getting the lease from or, you know, whoever we're paying royalties to while royalties to, while we're, while we're working that out, like, we'll, like, keep the music up or, like, do you think that it's, like, they try to do it case-by-case basis? So, like, how do you think that this got so out of hand where people started recognizing that they were not paying royalties to everybody? I think... I think the way it works is Spotify does it case by case. Mm -hmm. I feel that's what they do Mm because from what I've read, that's how I understand the licensing process. It's been like different every time. Yeah. uh, But I understand that Spotify does it in a way where they apply for the license for a song or an album to, you know, smooth things along or a soundtrack even from like a movie or a TV show. Yeah, totally, totally. And they apply for that license, mm-hmm. and that license, you know, goes into the work, and however many, much paperwork has to be done, and mm-hmm. however many people need to be involved, what the percentages for the royalties are, right. uh, and just all that stuff has to be taken into account. Sure. Now, I believe that goes case by case, and 
the caveat to that is that Spotify is trying to get out all this music, get out all this music, have all this be the be the number one streaming music app mm-hmm. because they have to deal with the likes of uh, Apple Music and SoundCloud, right? He, like huge competitors. Well, and also, yeah, I mean, even though like people joke on Pandora, I know people that still listen on Pandora. Exactly. I know people that still just go to YouTube. Yeah. Like they're like Google Play, huge, iTunes, huge streaming services, all this stuff for everything. So, and Spotify wants to be number one, right? Obviously. I mean, like they to be. I mean, like before this lawsuit dropped, before this uh-huh. information came I'm out. I'm sure they were trying to be quicker than everyone else to put up as much music. And. That being the case, uh, this case by case shit was mm-hmm. such a slow moving process because they had to do it case by case mm-hmm. that they couldn't do it. They couldn't be number one uh, at that slow pace. Yeah. They wanted to get there as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Right. So what they ultimately ended up doing was skipping over the licensing process. Right. Yeah. Kind of running uh, right through that, keeping the shit because the because sh- the licenses are applied. Right. But. They're in the works. They could be in the works for, like, however long. Paperwork has to come through, right? Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. shit has to... It could be months on months on months process. Someone's got to sign that shit. It could honestly be, like, a month process per license. Right. I so, mean, who knows? So who's going to wait to not? N- definitely not the person that's trying to be number one. Exactly. Not Spotify. So what they ultimately do... <laughs> crazy. ...is they skip that process... Then, or I mean, like I don't want to say they skip the process because while it's in the process of getting done, if they're, they're it's trying, in, yeah. it's in the process, it's in the quay. But um, uh, like I said, uh, they That's they still... they go ahead and stream it, and the license not be approved yet. Right. And therefore, because it's being streamed, the only person making money off that is Spotify. Right. Because the license isn't approved, therefore royalties haven't Aren't been established. Aren't getting paid. And are, like, are they going to like value all the royalties that weren't paid until like the paperwork goes through? Like, I mean, there's a lot of gray area. Exactly. That's probably why there's a hundred, or a hundred, one point six billion dollars in this. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely they're, can understand they're that. They're trying to get major compensation from I Spotify. I mean, right, yeah. Because, I, I mean, they caught him on they caught him on a big thing. That's a huge thing. From what I understand, too, I didn't read too much into this, but, you know, just hearing this kind of makes me wonder, this is not the first time something like this has happened with Spotify. Mm-hmm. This is not the first lawsuit to come about. And it really just makes me think, well, you know, goddamn, like, how many songs on Spotify are, are still not? Yeah, yeah, still unlicensed, still not paying any... And it makes me wonder, because I don't have Spotify, mm-hmm. but it makes me wonder, uh, now that this lawsuit has come out, mm-hmm. are they still streaming these unlicensed songs? Is mm. uh, are Will they, it not be resolved until the case is done? Like, exactly. Does, does the lawsuit What involve? happens to the money in between? Like, exactly. Like, they, obviously, they have to be compensated right, right fucking now. Yeah. And all that money well, within no, that amount they can't of time. Be. What about the lawsuit? What if it doesn't go through? Like, what if they had, like, all the paperwork correct and, like, Tom Petty is totally driven? I mean, if they just... I mean, like, you could be right, Spotify could have all that stuff in the quay yeah but then just turn right around bust it all out and get it all good exactly and have the license but we wouldn't approved. know that until the lawsuit exactly well honestly though even if that was the case they would have probably would it, busted that out right away would any of the would any of the artists even agree to those licenses anymore right yeah they just Did revoke they... those licenses and not allow spotify to stream their songs at all it, that, that's very that very well could be the case and honestly, anything could happen. Truly, with Spotify and uh, Wixen and all of any together. any other music label that's in on this. I mean, when it comes to Rick James, <laughs> kidnapping girls, spreading them right through <laughs> the crack cocaine pipes. <laughs> He's Rick James, bitch. bitch. True. I, I just there's not much more you can say. No, really not. I I just. It just opens up a whole can of worms of discipline. Oh, really. Gray area, lots of complication, big old lawsuit. It's classic, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's Get Apple Music. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. Yeah, m- moving on. Uh, this past week, uh, or past week and a half, the mm-hmm. Huncho Jack, Jack Huncho, came out, album. Album, totally. uh, yep. Came out. 
Definitely did. Travis Scott. Quavo. Quavo from Migos. Right. Uh, I guess this is... I don't know if this is like a, a long-awaited thing. If mm. this has been not particularly, this is mostly for. unexpected. Uh, it's part of that this weird wave that started like six to eight months ago of rappers that seemed like sort of unlikely pairs getting together, sure, and uh, making an album like sure. without warning. Yeah, uh, Twenty One Savage and Offset, both the, two uh, different types of rappers. Yeah, the. Uh, Double or Nothing album, Metro Boomin producer, and Big Sean rapper. Right. Uh, Unlikely. Yeah, uh, and and uh, I forget what else there was. A- They're all. I mean, honestly, like not super unlikely. I don't know. It's just like people that you haven't seen work together work together because they're cool and they know that they'll make good music. Yeah, they they know that people are gonna pay attention. Right, and or if they're just like they feel like the same creative vibe or something you know they feel like they come from like a similar area or like you know yeah whatever it may be because travis scott and quavo both come from the southern region of the united states right Uh, travis missouri Mm -hmm. and uh quavo atlanta yeah the north side um it took me a while actually to understand what the fuck huncho jack was Really? I had because I mean, like, I don't, I didn't, I've never in the entire day I've been listening to Migos, and or I don't, I don't listen to Travis Scott. Right? Uh, have I ever heard of Cactus Jack and Huncho? Yeah. I didn't know that that was their nicknames. It's not. It was not until this album. This is. It's brand new shit. I know. Well, I mean, Quavo's always been called Huncho. Huncho. Exactly. Huncho. I'm like, I, it's leader. It's it's it, it's just head like hunt, head Huncho, head Huncho. Well, not even like it's just like it's what it. It's just like what Quavo has always called himself. Quavo's a Huncho because he's like the one third, like first third oh, of okay. Migos. He's like the leader, whatever. And I get, but like, I get Travis Scott's Cactus Jack. That makes sense. Because he's from the South. I mean, have you seen the album cover? The... Of, of this. Of this Yeah, album? of this yeah, album. Totally. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it looks pretty fun. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty I'll funny. Pretty cool. Pick fucking Huncho <laughs> and Cactus Jack. It, I, I, okay, getting into this. Yeah, totally. Uh, right off the bat, I have to say, I am not the biggest Travis Scott fan. Yeah. I am not... It doesn't seem I'm, like you should. I am not a huge Travis Scott fan at all, to be oh honest. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is a toughie for you. This, this entire album is shit. Not entirely. Not uh, mostly. But I, because I mean, like. This is a lot of I Travis like, Scott. This, this is, is a lot of Travis Scott. Every song Scott. has Travis Scott, and that's yeah. a shame. Um, sure. I mean, like, for me. Right. I, but, but, like, honestly, that's just because I don't like his vocals. Sure. I think entire. I think what it is. You just don't like the auto tune. I just don't like it. I hate it. I think it is. I think now. I mean, the I will be fair. Though. I will be fair okay. and say that not every time he gets on a track doesn't sound bad. Doesn't sound entirely bad. Okay, fair. But when it sounds bad, dude, it does. It really sounds. Oh, bad. I agree. Definitely. I mean, that's what auto tune is. Pretty much, it's kind of a hit or miss, but at the same time, it's not. Uh, yeah, he definitely is. I can definitely say one thing about Travis Scott. I like him. He's a good. He's a good artist, but it, he is that an artist, and he is flawed. And I feel like part of his flaw is how pretentious he is about the art that he's created. I feel like he feels like there's a much bigger impact of what he's made. Like he's placed himself into like some type of like. It's like the Drake mentality, you know. Man feels like he's just like God by now, right? And he's so he's not. absolutely not. Right? He's so it's just not. like uh, there's a certain level of pretentiousness that uh, you can't really get past I when can't. when I when you're an artist. It's hard. It's just hard. It depends on how much you like the guy because there's a lot of people that treat that guy as though he he is. deserves that. I, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock the guy. I mean, in terms, terms of like. When you well, perform Goosebook 16 times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can't really... Okay, try to... I don't, I, mean, like, I don't even know why I like him so much. Uh, because of, like, all the things that have surrounded him as, like, a person. Like, I've never known anything particularly great 
about mean, Travis Scott. I've never heard anything particularly great about he's, Travis Scott. He's this past year he started a Cactus Jack music label. I mean that's pretty big. Yeah, that's pretty big for him, I'm sure. But like, it's just like, I don't know. I don't, I've never heard anything particularly stellar about his personality, mm-hmm. but about his music. I've never really give, been given an opinion that's been bad either, though. So it's I don't know. He's just a not standout star. No, he's not standoffish. Uh, I think that's that's part of the reason I don't like him. And just, I, you think he's just too basic? You think he's I, too? Plain? I think he's way too basic really dude i think he's wow. so fucking pl- i think he is Just literally plain. saltine cracker without the fucking salt wow dude that's so sad i i, I mean like uh, this it's whole awesome. album this whole album it's, one if there's it's any, the same thing it really is, is the same thing dude Every if you like this thing, song. if you like this thing you like this thing you <gasps> motherfucking like this thing this mo- this motherfucker fat but, like, if you don't like it, bro, it's not for you. 13 but. tracks of literally, I'm not shitting you, the same song. motherfucking topic. The exact song. This Every is, single song it's has ice, it's, ice, 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 ice. Yeah. And some line ice. relating to ice, fucking jewels, on my watch, look at my bitch, all that shit. And I don't really give that much of a fuck. Nah. I'll say that right now. It's, uh, it's monotonous. Uh, it's hard to pay attention to the lyrics and get from song to song. Yeah. But the whole of the album, I'm gonna. As uh, like a vibe. As like, like a vibe. At, like, like most of the songs as a vibe, I can vibe to. Yeah. And get a, it, I can get a good mood. From. I think they all sound good. I, I think all these songs sound at least okay. The production's There's really some, good. I, I definitely have a few favorites on here. There's some iffy ones for me, but most of them, uh, the ones that like. I don't know. I feel like they're all pretty structurally, structurally sound. Like I, yeah, like I said, the production is pretty, pretty yeah. fucking solid. Yeah. Uh, especially coming from the likes of Travis Scott, who, even though I don't like his vocals, I can, I he can, reckon, beats. I can, yeah, I can he recognize he has a uh, great production value. Yeah. Um, and Quavo doesn't, Quavo doesn't do shit that doesn't. Yeah. Quavo doesn't really fuck around. Honestly, like Quavo's, uh, like cemented. Yeah. Like even, like even if I'm not like, out of all the Migos. This is just me personally. I don't think Quavo's the strongest. Now I've heard people say he is the strongest out yeah. of all the Migos. He's definitely the most individual. That's what. I, that's what I. That that is the only thing I can recognize. That yeah. is the only thing I can. He's get not necessarily of. the strongest. He's just the most alone. He is. He's the he's, most. He's standoffish. Stand stand yeah, he Migos. stands off. He. Yeah. He. He just. I can and like his vocals. I, I can get down with his. Yeah. Uh, persona he embodies is is sort of atypical, but it's strangely alluring. I can strangely kind of yeah, I can strangely get in the same mood that he's putting off. Yeah, no, he's pretty good at that. But my problem uh, with Quavo on lies this album, in uh, yeah lies in the fact that he, like I said earlier, is just really, really, really monotonous. Mm-hmm. With anything Quavo puts out on this album, it it always feels like he's just talking about the same thing. True. And even though, great example of uh, Quavo not really meeting the expectations I thought that we're going to go with this album, because I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect much from it, mm-hmm. but when I, when I first sat down and started listening to the first track, I was... I was a little taken aback, but only in the first few seconds. And I'll explain. I understand. No, I understand Modern Slavery. Modern Slavery. It's a good song. Okay. I like that song. First off, with... Uh, no, I'm not going to knock the entirety of the song, but I do have to say this. Modern Slavery, that title alone, uh, reaches out and makes you start wondering. What, what does the that mean? What is this going to be about? And it right. makes me think, okay, this is going to be like some sort of... Uh, commentary. It does not make you think that it, it's chains. It's. It does not make you think. Yeah. Uh, no. I, I, and the the beginning, the opening jazz. Oh, it's so nice. So clean. It's nice. But then it just. 
punches you in the fucking face. Nah, it's face. great. I love it, dude. It's, I, I mean, fucking love it. I, and I would ride with it. Because it's rap. It. It's rap. It's, it's Quavo. It's exactly trap. It's what you want. It's, it's what you want. I mean, because uh, obviously if you're huge fans of Quavo and Travis Scott, this is what you came to the album for. Yes, totally. Right at the start. But looking at uh, the start of the the start of the track and the title itself, and then one of the very first lines, uh, "Modern Slavery," uh, got all these chains on me. Mm-hmm. I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these damn chains, but it's not the 1800s, so they pay me. Yeah. That that could be. St- he could expand on that so much. That alone yeah. could be a metaphor, an analogy that he could expand upon. And actually say something meaningful. Immediately that. after, dip in my dreams and sauce. <laughs> Never been food for sharks. It just it goes into typical brag rap after that. And I mean, like, sure. if that's if, I mean, if that's what you were going for, that's fine. Yeah, that's Quavo. That's that's exactly like I said. If that's what you came to the album for, for it's fantastic. Just like, did you got regular that's Quavo, that's sharp, regular yeah. Travis Scott? Oh yeah, bro. That's Fuck good. Yeah. But my problem is that like. There's, they don't even attempt to the fullest of what they could have attempted to describe modern slavery. Yeah, to branch out, to have some variety. Mm. These are two artists that have a lot of leeway into and, what they're creating, and this yeah, is what they chose. Yeah. Exactly into the culture itself. They mm-hmm. affect what they say, whether they know it or not, or even accept it, right. has an impact on people. Yeah, and and. And I'm not going to say, like, yeah. fucking anything because I'm not shit compared to these guys. Sure. But they really had the potential to uh, make an impact, say something meaningful, have some mm-hmm. commentary on stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, I didn't expect, like, anything crazy. But, like, if they had expanded upon just that first analogy, mm-hmm. I really think that they could have they could have had a stronger, uh, I guess, emotion from me. They could have had me better. I have a question. What's up? Uh, so I have a, the question is like, do you think that it's either that the impact that was intended was not for you, or that the impact was lessened because of the fact that that like you like weren't like it it's not like your headspace to be in. Um. I would definitely say, um, sort of yes to both answers. Yeah. And I'll try to explain. No, it's cool. Um, with, in relation to your first part of your question, mm-hmm. I do intensely believe I am not the audience that this was made this for. This was made for somebody else? This was made for the kind of people that are hardcore Migos fans. Right. Uh, hardcore Travis Scott fans. The trap music group that get into just the vibe itself Mm -hmm. uh pretty much and that's fine Mm -hmm. that's i have nothing bad to say about those people i have nothing bad to say about the artists personally Mm -hmm. because you don't like the music i just it's not it's not the brand of music that was made for me sure totally okay yeah i agree They're, they're not the artists like i mean like i can like i said i can sit there and i can vibe to it too i am I, I try to be as open minded of a listener as I can. Mm-hmm. And when I was and when the beats got me and the tones got me, they really got me. They mm-hmm. got me mm-hmm. into it. Yeah. And there are like multiple times on this. Good points album. on this album. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That that grabbed me and just took me for the ride. Just for a little bit. That yeah. As at, at a few moments on the album, I became the audience member that this was made for. Yeah. And I was okay with that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the kind of person I am, the kind of music listener I am, mm-hmm. what I ultimately expected to more. get from rap, I expected more. Right. I mean, like I said, I didn't expect much, but just from my perspective as a listener, still could have gotten more. I still feel like I should have, could have, and in an alternate reality, would have gotten more. Okay, so like, is that with the assumption that Quavo and Travis Scott are who they are, and they have? only created as much as they have already are you saying like this should have recognized their new potential like this could have been a new thing where they were even technically musically sound better i'll say 
I expected that from Quavo. Really? I expected that. You expected, like, a complete redesign of Quavo? No, no, no. Not a complete redesign, but a progression... Of the art? Yes. Huh. Um, Because... Can you explain, like, what kind of tendencies you thought he was going to lead to? Yes, I will I will do my best to explain. Take your time. Um, I, I don't remember if it was uh, 2016, early 2016 or whatever, when these guys, Migos, start, first started popping off. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, again. Uh, and when they first started popping off, I remember I was there when they first started, like, getting really big into the mainstream. Um, well, like, you're like, talking, like, 2014? I think I don't remember. Twenty uh, thirteen. Shit, no. Nah, like when Bad and Bougie came out. Oh, okay. Because so like twenty sixteen. That's when they. That's, that's when they got famous again. Because Migos have been it for a while. Eh, uh, uh, they haven't been as good, but to a different audience, to the audience that we're talking that they're projecting to, mm-hmm. Migos have been the shit. Always. The shit. And that's that's fine. Like, uh, when I when I've been getting into rap music and such, it didn't really start until late 2015, 2016. Mm-hmm. I've always been into rap music, but I didn't really get into it into it mm-hmm. until right around that time. Yeah. And right around that time, that's when they first started getting, uh, in my opinion, like hitting big. the mainstream, right. getting really big, becoming. Because they Huge. came into your periscope, they came into your eyesight. Absolutely, and they got on my radar, and they've been on my radar for a while now. Right. And when they first, you know, came out to me, at least, um, I didn't think that much of them. Right. Uh, I didn't think they were that great. I mm-hmm. thought they were just another group uh, that was part of this trap, uh, rising trap genre. Right. Uh, I thought they were going to be exactly like the Lil Uzi Verts. The, uh, like, uh, who am I thinking of? I don't want to say Famous Dex. I'm thinking of somebody else. Uh, well, anyway. The, Trip your head? Uh, yeah. Lil Yachty, uh, Kodak Black. Yeah. Just a whole bunch of those people that started popping off around that time. Yeah. All these tracks. You thought they were going to be the same, yeah? Young thugs. I literally thought that that. Because at the time, I considered them a part of that crowd. Yeah. And as time went on... You realized that they weren't? Yeah, I felt like they, they were... Because Young Thug's not either. Mm-mm. I, he's trapped. Completely separate. He's... I mean, nowadays, uh, he's there's a discernible difference. They're back. around the same level, though. Back, I'd say... I'd know. say back then, there wasn't really that... No, not a huge Young Thug Because there wasn't, like, a good description of it. Of the music now, Trap wasn't even... Because Trap used to be, like, Trap as in, like... Fucking weird dubstep <laughs> house shit. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, but I remember that shit. But now, trap uh, is trap. As times progressed, especially I feel throughout the year of 2017. Oh, a huge, a huge, huge leaps. Difference. I yeah. feel. I feel like as a but towards the late yeah. 2017, I felt that Migos as a group had matured to a point where their rap skills, I felt, were profoundly better than what they used to be like. True, true. I felt like they were now at a point in their life where they were like, uh, we we can do so much better. Right. We as we being millionaires, being paid well paid artists, can put out music that people are gonna look at us and be like, they're the shit. Do you do you have like examples? Uh, what do you I, think? I'd say get the bag off the top of my head with I get the bag. Head. Yeah. So uh, that's a really good song. Uh, Takeoff's verse, killer. Sure. Uh, Quavo's chorus, his hook. I good. I love. I it. mean, yeah, it's repetitive. If anything, though, as well. I mean, they've always been repetitive. Though. True. I think that's just part of the Migos it, culture. It kind of is. Know, Versace, Versace, uh, Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana. I think that's just. I'm not gonna hold that against them because. That's part of their identity, I feel. In a way, yeah. I, I feel like they're straight away from that a lot more now because they realize that like there's uh, there's that more depth. I feel like yeah, they have matured. I get right. the bag. True. Get example, because that's not just repeating the same word over and over. No, definitely. That's not. a hook. Where there's yeah, there's, I mean, but on this on this album, what can you say is are the hooks all one word? No, but no. are you still upset by it? I, yeah. So I, what, what, I mean, where's the distinction? Then? I, I can say that I'm upset by it because we went from 
having clever lines that I felt you know can stick with you to having an entirety of an album in a way become repetitive because it reuses the same topics most of the time the same lyrics same mm-hmm. lines same just twist it around a little bit sure and I feel like it's different with this album because let's say in like an, like if I just took any one individual track here yeah. and took it out of the album yep. and that was all I listened to and yep. it was one of the great ones on here one yep. of the good ones yep. and I listened to that yep. I could honestly say you know this isn't that bad mm-hmm. this isn't awful this is really good actually it gets me it makes me vibe and then you'd forget about the rest exactly you you would not pay attention at all to the rest of the album but looking at the album as a whole that's what makes the difference to you that's what makes the difference for me it cool. it makes me just constantly feel like somebody's hammering into me the same stuff that they just got through saying on the previous track and the only thing that you know makes me you know start bumping my head a little bit is the guest verses the beats themselves and the hooks yeah the actual verses from Travis Scott and Quavo not a fan not a huge fan of Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one or two I'm pretty good with I I can't remember off the top of my head there was one that I I, I liked uh, from Quavo I can't remember what it was. Do you know the hook on the song? Oh, uh, no, I don't even remember what the song was. All right. Well, yeah, that's one of the things. It was one of the ones in the latter half of the album. Maybe like Hunter Jack? No. Same? I, I, like I said, I can't. You can't even, yeah, I can't fine. Even, Okay. I don't even remember what the beat was like. Um, right. but I just remember, I, I vaguely remember the line, and I can't pull it up right now in my mind, but I just, I just, it I just. You. It hit. Me. It, it was one of the few standout things from this album because, like I said, I didn't really feel like there was all that much. Not a whole lot of connection. It. Yeah, not a lot of like black and Chinese. Yeah, no, that's not a big one for me either. I uh, okay. Black and Chinese, uh, what it, meds on relief. I just I didn't honestly it didn't resonate with me. Very didn't. Much. Again, it was a t- it was a song title. Now this was my second mistake going into the album. Expecting something out of a song title that doesn't. Yeah, because honestly, I didn't do any research into either person's back like race, oh, back- yeah. ethnic background. No. So at first, at first glance, I thought it was gonna have something to do with like Quavo being half black, half Chinese, or some shit like that. Sure. Had no I, like I, I don't. You didn't know. Like, you didn't fucking know. I was just an assumption that hit me right away. But then as soon as the song starts, I'm like, all right, this is. About a bitch. Absolutely not what I thought I was going to be like because I didn't understand what the connection was. I didn't, at first, I didn't understand what the connection between black and Chinese was. Yeah. Um, only to find out later, looking at annotations for the song, that it was about uh, the types of women they like. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like there was a strong connection there. Yeah, no. Um, that's, I mean, that's just me. Some shit, yeah. They a lot of shit's implied with them. I think it's difficult sometimes. Yeah, but then I I get into I know lyrics in the latter half of that song where they say something like karate and taekwondo, and if you like black and Chinese women, why are you referring to things that two aren't different, related? Two not just things that might be unrelated, but I think they're trying to relate them as a thing. Yeah. Because those are Asian fighting styles. But the problem is... They're completely different. Yeah, Taekwondo is from Korea and karate <laughs> is from Japan. Well, there's definitely one thing that's for sure. They are definitely high when they write the music. <laughs> that's... Yeah, and, you can tell. Yeah, and I mean, it's not a whole lot more than that. Because I mean... Sometimes. I just... I'm not gonna say. I have to say something. There's a Travis Scott bar in this where he hit, where he literally says, "There's a lot of jelly on this PJ," and I say to myself, <laughs> "What? It what? makes sense in your head in the song. You probably looked past it, it, listened to it in the album, didn't even hear it." Yeah. There's a lot of jelly else. on this PJ. What? <laughs> Are you talking about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? <laughs> Are you talking about pajamas? Oh my god. What, you, what exactly? There's jelly on my pajamas. <laughs> Mom! 
I spilled my PBJ on my jammies. Oh, dude, I just, it's not even that. Like, I don't expect that to be it, but I'm just, like, curious because, like, I think that they rely on the fact that people don't think about the things that they say a lot. Mm-mm. That's what I mean. Like, their audience that they're trying to appeal to is just the vibes. Well, but they don't care. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of amazing. And <laughs> I guess I guess going into this album, one of my biggest things was, like, before when I was talking about what I thought was the progression of Migos, here I felt like... They, Deceleration? Yeah, I felt like they kind of took a step back, mm. or they kind of just slowed their momentum and just kind of was doing business as usual. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way. The only one-third of the Migos is represented here. Takeoff's only on one song. Offset's on one song. Offset, well, Dubai Shit sucks. Do I Shit does suck. And Offset is on half a verse. That's it's not even because of that. It's just because Dubai Shit sucks. Dubai Shit isn't even good. Hook is bad. Uh, uh, Dubai, Dubai shit. shit is another example Dubai of a song. A different place. Where they start off with a concept. Yep. And don't and explore it. don't carry it out at all. Nope. They jump right into the song. We're in Dubai. Exactly. Like, the beginning of the song is like, I, I, I feel like shit. I feel like I'm... Uh, I don't remember what the other lyrics are, so I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. I feel like shit. I don't feel good. So what I'm going to do is drown myself in a shit ton of drugs and lavish things by spending money on them just to drown out all the shitty feelings I'm right. having. Four, four lines explain all that. Yeah, right. And not even done by either of the two artists. It's done by some other guy, uh, Young Lean or something like that. Okay. Uh, that's it. I, I think is only credited on Rap Genius and then jumps right into the Dubai shit song and that is it that is the last time that topic is explored because it just goes into the lavish things that then I'm spending money on but the problem is you don't get that underlying that sensation enough yeah that that they're feeling something underneath the surface yeah that there's something more going on here I mean it they tacked on they to don't you. they don't need you to know what's going on with them honestly and I, I respect that. Yeah, but it's like you would like a connection. Yeah, you'd like I, some to know something. I would be more okay with it. If you knew something about the person. Or if they just left that part out. Sure, I understand that much. Because, I mean, like, I'm not... Because, I mean, like, I won't expect anything from you mm -hmm. if you don't give me anything in the first place. Truly. If you give me something... To eat that on. That makes me... Yeah, that, that, that gets me biting on your bait. That's what makes it worse. Yeah, because then as soon as you... It, it feels tacked on because they just felt like they put it there to add more depth to something that, that has no, no depth, depth whatsoever. Right, yeah. I mean, it is pretty shallow, this entire album. Yeah. Inc incredibly shallow. And I wouldn't care if I didn't feel like... If I didn't have this weird sensation... That there should be something better? That that they're trying to make something better. That that they're trying to give you the illusion that they're saying something more than they actually are. Really profound. Yeah, like, like they're turning a... They're, they're attempting to turn a kiddie pool into a full a deep sea dive. Right. Oh, okay, well, even bigger. Nice. I mean, like, I'm not... Because, I mean, like... You're I'm, just saying it's, it's a different analogy. genre of rap, sort mm -hmm. of, in a way... And from the perspective of uh, one of the vibe audience people, I'm not going to insult their intelligence or anything like that. That's not what I'm doing right now. All I'm saying, though, is that maybe the first time you hear it and you hear stuff like that, mm -hmm. that makes you maybe think that there is more going on here. And then your lasting impression... By the time that it's over. Yeah, because it's already by the time of the next fully, bar. Yeah, you don't fully pay that much attention to it if you're just vibing to it. A lot it. of jelly on this PJ. Ex uh, ah. But, um... Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I, I guess if there was... Um, another issue I kind of took up with this album was I did not think this was a strong pairing. Mm, really? Between two artists. Be wow. Because I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I feel like when you do something like this, you should... When two artists get together to do a, an album like this, mm -hmm. I feel like you should be two diverse enough artists to make it work. If that's the angle you're going for, you're trying to be two different people, or trying to get two different personalities here, yeah. like 21 Savage and Offset, yeah. and put those two together, yeah. it works in that sense. Yeah. Because uh, Offset, 
is from Migos. Mm-hmm. 21 Savage is like a killer, a crack dealer, that kind of shit. Cocaine, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Uh, even though they're both from Atlanta. Right. But they're from different sides. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, but you liked it because you liked it. I, now, <laughs> now that isn't to say that Without Warning didn't have its own issues. Yeah, but you liked it because you liked it. I liked what I'm trying to say is, if you liked Quavo and Travis Scott, which I do, you would find that this is a good representation of what they both have to offer. Yes. And um, one of the better co like cohesive things that they've probably both either done, I feel not like even with each other, but with each other makes this like even better. I feel like they're too similar, though. I feel like because of that similarity, that that significant similarity between the two, that I don't feel like... You don't think they're different enough? I don't. I don't feel like... Because I feel like, one, they both use autotune. Okay. Um, They both... Like, their voices are, you know, different enough, but Travis Scott's voice doesn't really pick up enough in a way that makes it stand out. He doesn't really have a standout voice to me. It's mm. not something... It just sounds like an average Joe's voice. Just auto-tune? Uh, yeah, with auto-tune added. Uh, Quavo sounds different enough, but the problem is with the fact that they both are using a similar style of rap. They're both using... It's like the simple like two-word rhyme. It's the triple flow. Da-da, da-da, That's da-da, what Mikos is famous for. Yeah, and then Travis Scott uses it too. To match that style, yeah. as opposed to using his own style. Well, it, to be honest with you, the reason that I talked about the like Migos being such a big thing and coming out before you thought that they had come out is because they had. Mm-hmm. It, it, they were famous because of this flow, because of the triple of flow, because of the style, and so many people had gotten around to liking the style, to hearing the style, because the sa- the the sound of it is good. It's it, it's a way to make like music like um, a way to make like, make like bars like to where like the aesthetic not aesthetically but uh what's the word for um right away when you when you hear them it sounds good it's, it's just pleasing, pleasing to the ear. ear right yeah and it like it's just the way that the the words are like put together and everything but like a lot of people adopted the style because of this right mm. and uh you you could talk about influences and stuff like where shit came from all like all day but basically, like, he is taking the style to represent uh, them, but it's just as much his as it is theirs, in a way. I I can feel that to an extent. Because, because he kind of raps like that all the time. And I'm not an avid Travis Scott listener. So right, so, so I really, this so is I kind of like your one... This is like, but that being said, despite the fact that they're... To me, they they blend together too well. They blend together in a way that they that it's sometimes it. My first listen through, it was a very hard to discern. Moments, very rare moments on the album. It was hard to discern between yeah, the two I because their styles that they're using are so similar. And, and there's a couple where they're switching pretty quickly back attitude, between each other. Yeah, their attitudes are yeah, a little sure. too similar. Their tones are a little too similar. The moods they're setting are a little too similar. Mm-hmm. And what they're rapping about is a little too similar. Sure. Um, and and but that could work in a way. The only reason something like Twenty One Savage and Offset works is because they're two different styles. But the reason something like Bad Meets Evil works with like Royce to Five Nine and Eminem works, they're similar in they come from the same city. Uh, they're they they rap in a similar fashion mm-hmm. compared to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the difference between why something like that works as compared to why something like Huncho Jack doesn't work is that their deliveries are, well, albeit somewhat similar, the way they work off of each other in the album, the way they're clever with each other, their interactions with each other make up for it, I think. Whereas opposed to Quavo and Travis Scott, they don't really... There's no intellectual backup. Yeah, there's no real interactions between the two. They just they they pick their topic of fucking bitches, doing drugs, and killing you know motherfuckers, and mm. they just go with that. Yeah, they don't really do anything that cl- 
clever with it. No. Nope. And I'm not. I'm not saying they have. They to. have to, or like, I, yeah, it's just. I don't expect that. Wish like, you I, just I w- saying. Well, you did obviously expect that. Otherwise, you wouldn't wish for more. I. You expected I, something. I expected something to. I expected this matchup to feel like a good matchup, at least, because when you come out with something like this. You yourself, as the artist, have to think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Au- your audience expects it to be good. I've, ex- I've, I saw some people on Reddit and stuff that were talking about it, and you know, I, I was like, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Travis Scott, but I'll check it out because I am interested in these collaborations. What did you find as far as opinions went? Um, I all I came across was just c- crazy Travis Scott fans that were like, can't wait for this fire. Uh, so I am for this fire or whatever. Mm. Uh, I mean, like. I, yeah. Whatever. I didn't. I mean, I didn't hear to any of the any of the singles, uh, pre album. Yeah. Uh, I went into it totally cold. This is definitely a bigger, bigger one of like. Okay. So like, I have to say, a lot of the stuff that Garrett has said here, like, I, I've been agreeing with him. I've been working him through his thought process, but I mostly agree with almost all of it. I, I particularly really like this album. This album really works for me. But I let me finish. I I, I, I have to say. It, the only reason that I feel like it works for me is because I know how lackluster it really is. Mm-hmm. I know at base level, this is not a particularly fantastic project. I like uh, a few of the singles. I lo- and by like a few, I mean like five or six. So that gives me at least like a, an average mm-hmm. of like good songs to bad. So like I would say that this is a good album for people who like this music. People who people who like this shit. Like I don't know. Like it's like. <laughs> The, the people that, like, wanted to hear this shit know exactly how it's gonna sound. Mm. And, like, they're gonna, like, like the shit out of it. But, like, obviously, like, people that don't, like, aren't, aren't... It's, I don't know. So you personally, what did you expect going into the album? I, personally, I don't... I don't think about a whole lot of stuff uh, that I expect when I, when I start listening to something. I usually just start, because I, I have... I have, think, I have the place that I am there at that moment, and... I have the starting point in which I take the knowledge that I had before that, and then I now have the understanding of life that I have with that knowledge, whatever it may be. So if it's music, I'll sit down and I'll and I'll be like, it's time to digest this music. Mm. I listen through the entire thing, mm. and I'm like, here's what's bad, here's what's good, here's what's bad. You know, go through everything about what I what I like and this like. So I I usually don't think about what I expect from something. You just go into it with the knowledge you have. Pretty much. I like. I, I just like going in kind of empty-handed, kind of open-minded, just to take whatever I hear first mm-hmm. and just be like, oh, so it's probably going to be like that. And then most of the time I'm surprised that it's not exactly like that or, you know, whatever whatever, whatever happens upon the listening experience, whatever, whatever may be there to surprise me or, you know, change my opinion on something I, I usually like to take into account. But I, I just like doing things start to finish, to be honest. Okay. Um, going, leaving the album, what were your final impressions on it? My final impressions of the album, uh, the last couple songs were honestly kind of a little, eh, yeah, for me. I felt kind of like it went kind of downhill after a little while. Yeah. I don't know, like, the way that I was actually introduced to, like, this album even coming out is because no shit, I actually, like pulled out the fucking Facebook. I haven't gone on Facebook in like 67 years. <laughs> but um I got on and I was like I was looking at like an ad and an ad came up for the song for Hunter Jack, like the song and the album and it was like playing. I was like, "Oh shit. What is this?" Like mm-hmm. this is Quavo. Like I hear Quavo in my ears and I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" Like I'm, I didn't even expect Quavo. It. I didn't yeah, exactly. It's funny. No, but um I was like, "Oh shit, I got to check this shit out." Uh-huh. And um yeah, I was just, like, super surprised because, like, who expects to find shit on Facebook? So, like, obviously, like, they were trying to get shit out for the yeah. album. They knew that it was going to be less of a hit. Yeah, so they had to do better at advertising. Yeah. And I can feel that, but, like, I, I don't know. Like, white people love Quavo. White people love Migos. Uh, like, I, none other. Uh, I mean, like, I, I guess I know. But at the same time, bro, like, it's it's it, all up in the air to be honest. Like, I, I mean, I, I try not to understand why people like this thing or this. Thing. Yeah, true. That's true. I mean, it's hard to say one way or the other. But I mean, I'll respect it. There's 
I, at least, okay, I, I take back that white people love Quavo or like white people love Migos, but I'll say there are quite a few white people at Migos and Quavo and Travis Scott concerts. Oh, I thought you asked why people. No. I thought you, I didn't know you were making a statement. No, I was saying white people, <laughs> white people, <laughs> T-E, love Quavo, love Migos. I guess just because it's easily digestible. And we're trying to get high. That's true. And we care. I mean, obviously, everyone cares about money at least a little bit. Yeah. And we're probably the greediest bastards. I guess just because on a, a basic, fundamental human level, it, we want to get it. We want to get it. Yeah. Because we don't get it to begin with, so we want to get it. Yeah. Second to last question. Give it to me. Moving forward from this album. Is this going to change anything? I was just going to ask, where do you think these artists are going to go and what do you think is the sort of angle they're probably going to try and approach from now? To be honest with you, I think that they could go anywhere they want. Mm -hmm. But if I had to guess, I think the next step for Quavo is probably going to be another album. Uh, there's going to be a Migos album coming out. Okay. Real soon. Yeah. Relatively soon. I, I definitely believe it's going to be a full-length album probably. You know, full-length. Yeah. yeah, like like full-length album. Hopefully, I mean, I, if it's just going to be another mixtape, if there's going to be a collaboration with somebody, I'm excited to see it with Quavo. Travis Scott, more or less, same thing. Uh, it depends on what it is. Obviously, like, I know who I like. I know who I don't like. If it's going to be a collaboration with someone I don't like, you know, it's going to be all right because he doesn't obviously make always the best music. I don't like... To be honest, there's a lot of Travis Scott music that I just don't like. Hit and miss. Very hit and miss. Very iffy, very iffy. I but on this like album, I was really, I was really kind of happy with how basic it was, to be honest, in a way. I, I like, I mean, I'll... Sometimes I'll he just, like, tries to go to... Eh. I mean, I'll grant him this. He didn't get too preachy. Didn't try to get too out there, no. Uh, he, he didn't come off as uh, a, an asshole no. at any given point. All super digestible, yeah. And... There and as much as I can rag on his voice and his vocals or whatever, uh, I think I said earlier. Sometimes I do get hit by something that kind of makes me bump my head a little bit. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a vibe still, and I feel like he relies on that. But at the same time, like it it has its it has its things, you know. It works when it works. Yeah, it works when it works. I I can agree with that. Um, last question. Last question. Out of five, what would you rank this album? And you can do, like, points. Yeah, of whatever, course. Whatever. No, I assumed that already. 4.2. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, I can see that. Uh, your your reasoning stands, uh, I guess, for 4.2. It's, it's not great. I mean, it's not it's okay. Great. It's good. It's good. It's good in a little bit. It's good in point two, but it's not great. Okay. I can see. I can see that because just based on... Uh, maybe, like... Maybe like 3.8, 3.9. That's 100. I, I, totally, I ran four. I can totally see that. Uh, probably less than four, yeah. Just because, uh, like for me, it, it, it's it, probably like a 2.2. Yeah, because oh, I want to say like a two. Seven. No, I think I just have to give it a solid three. Three on the even. Yeah. Right in the middle. It didn't really spin you either way. Yeah, because, I mean, like, as much as I can sit here and I can bitch about something... And act things, like you... And act yeah. like I get more of a shit than I really do. Because you don't. The truth of the matter <laughs> is... <laughs> the truth <laughs> of the matter is that at the end of the... At the end, like, by next week... I, I, opinion won't matter. The Yeah, my opinion won't matter. My opinion might change or it might not. Yeah. And to be honest, this... This album has affected me the same way uh, a light breeze affects me. Probably didn't affect you at all, yeah. I, it, it, it's not even about that. It's not. I don't think you're meant to take away something, but yeah. yeah. And even 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 knowing that, I'm not supposed to take something huge away from it. At, as an album, sonically, I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, very appealing to the ear in yeah. most cases. Yeah. And, at least attempting and that's more than I can say for a lot of rappers out there more than you can say for Quavo and Travis Scott all the time yeah and I can walk away with that information with what I've heard and I can say you know I didn't hate it maybe they'll get and, better and and yeah maybe and for me maybe maybe they'll make something else like this yeah I, I, like honestly like I don't hate this album I didn't no, hate it not, I didn't dislike it it's not a very hateable album I don't think it there's really something for, it's not even that there's something for everyone but it's just so unbelievably this yeah. one thing that if you don't like that then you don't like that and you could hate the album 
but it's not very hateable for someone who likes rap i think because at least at some point you're like okay i've heard this enough to where i can't I can't just keep hating it, otherwise I'll just hate myself. You know, it's yeah, kind of okay. it's, like, it's kind of like Pavlovian in a way. Like early, like, <laughs> like like at earlier points in studying rap, as I've tried to do, like there were plenty of moments where I was like, God, I'm I'm so sick of all these rappers. I'm so uh, sick of hating drugs, this because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bitches, yeah. fucking your bitch. You can only hate shit. something so much, right? Before, before you're you just, just like, accept it. I mean, I remember a time when you didn't like Twenty One Savage at all. And then we did the without warning stuff, and I was just like, well... Yeah, it was crazy. Like, I mean, like, you know, opinions change, and at, at, at certain points, you just accept that this is part of the culture. Yeah, like, it really is. And this is a... It's like, so this I can't is probably a, this is probably This is probably a bigger piece, of the, bigger, piece or bigger piece of the culture than you probably realize. Yeah, because, I mean... Like that's, Which probably affects a lot of people that you don't even know, and, and like are younger than you, and don't yeah. think about nearly half the shit that they say or do, and exactly. are stupid. But yeah. and that's why I can't really knock Quavo or Travis Scott because, because they're just trying to put out music. Because th- yeah, they're whatever culture they're affected by. This culture, that's this what rap they made. Culture, yeah, they, they've made it they for them. Are. They are part of the culture, and they're doing their part. Uh, yeah, I, I have to say. So uh, yeah, I, I finish it out with three. You finish it out with like three point nine. Three point nine. Uh, yeah, I'll stick with that. That's probably good. Uh, I, I think that that's 3.9 probably three point nine to four point two, whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever. It's around a four. Yeah. I, either way, it's okay. It's yeah. a good album. I think that we've definitely talked about shit and a half. Yeah. There has been a lot of stuff discussed. I hope you guys fucking enjoyed listening at least a little bit to us rambling about random shit. Yep. Um, I have to say it's fucking late as the bitch right now oh, oh, yeah. and some insight into the recording of this it's uh it's like past 2 a.m yeah i don't yeah pretty much it's it is currently no it's it's 3 22 fantastic <laughs> uh, uh, that's <laughs> oh geez uh, well anyway i hope uh, <laughs> everyone uh, enjoyed this week's c4 talks thank you guys so much for listening it's been great i'll see you guys on the next one stay safe